Sorry about running out of time on that last one. Welcome back to 5.2. Just got a little bit left here. Again, we were on the end of this. I think we got the third angles theorem. That was this up here after the other angles were congruent. Uh, more than one. <clears throat> and uh, <coughs> then theorem 5.4. That's our triangles are congruent because all the parts are congruent. I got in the green. Separating these diagrams can be helpful. Just draw on the two triangles. This one, it doesn't end up helping much. I've been making this problem so much harder than it was ABC, DCB. You got a right angle. Sorry, I can't write. That you're given these congruent. Reflexive property makes those congruent. But this one, I didn't even, it's so simple, it's scary. Geez, they show all of these are congruent. Measure of angle one equals what? It's already shown to you. Just fill that out. Okay. Uh, here you got to find measure of angle one. Find the measure of this angle. Gave you a little hint right there, and you got it. Guess I really didn't need that much video for this one. I thought number seven was a much harder problem. Uh, some comments. Take a look at the book. I was looking at the book. The uh, first page in there, 240, gives a lot of uh, explanation about corresponding parts and examples using some of the uh, rigid motions. That's the transformations to help see things. Uh, we don't have any of the SSS, SAS, ASA, AAS at this point. The only way we've talked about at this point in the 5.2 is triangles are congruent if all their corresponding parts are congruent. That's why we're getting everything congruent. In the coming chapters, we will start working on easier ways to do that. So that's it. That's the second part of our video. Have a good afternoon, a good morning, or a good evening whatever your option is.